In this video, we're going to go over the top five best places to live in Vero Beach slash Indian River County. The reason I say Indian River County is because we're using the niche website to avoid any steering, but I'll tell you a little bit about the website, what it gives us, um, what there is to do in the areas that they're giving us, what the home prices are, and then some places you could sneak into that might fit your lifestyle, but give you a little bit better pricing. So let's jump right into it. And if you need help relocating, please feel free to reach out. We have a whole team of lenders, real estate agents, and people just ready to get you in the right home that fits your needs. I know it's hard when you're moving from a place that you maybe visited once, or maybe you saw a couple of videos and you like to see what Vero Beach has to offer. So this video will do it for you. Let's jump right into the first one. So let's jump right into it. Like I said, I'm just doing the top five list. If you want an extended version because uh, Sebastian and Felsmere are not on this list, and if you're not familiar with the area, Sebastian's a little bit more of that suburbs feel. Felsmere is a little bit more of that uh, country agricultural farm um, equ equestrian type of feel. So um, if you want an extended version, just leave a comment below and I'd be more than happy to make that. But let's start off with the top five. And like you see right here, it is going to be Vero Beach at number five, where you're looking at an average home price of 287.5, and the population is 16,254. That's definitely growing. All the school systems are going to be the same as well. So you, you have Liberty Magnet, Osceola Magnet, Indian River Charter High School, Vero Beach High School. As you can see, it's ranked as an A- minus on here. Let's jump over to the Google Maps area, and you'll notice that it starts at around the Jackie Robinson training complex, goes around the Vero Beach Regional Airport, you pass Big Shots, and then you take the Merrill P. Bridge, and it goes up and around here to the other side, South Beach Park, down the 17th Street Bridge, and then kind of cuts off and goes around here. So it's a, it's a different outline, but some places that I would uh, consider moving, Vero Isles, but you'll hear locals refer to it as the fingers because, as you can see, it's almost shaped like fingers. So there's access to the intercoastal and the indian river lagoon from your backyard most places have a dock attached so you have your boat boaters are big in this community and why not there's also a park inside which is young's park it's nothing crazy with um like gym equipment or um, playground stuff it's more of just pavilions and restrooms but that is a great place to look and it's highly sought after the cheapest home you could find in there is around a million um, just because you have access to the intercoastal and the Indian River Lagoon. So if you're looking to invest or find a little fix me upper, I would start looking definitely around this area right here. The property value is going to go up because they're actually converting this power plant and water treatment plant into a shopping, dining uh, they're going to have a high school row team or just a rowing team in general, playgrounds, parks, an area that could come up in, in property value. Something else to take note of is right across from the fingers, you have Miracle Mile. So it's a bunch of different shops, local vendors, or you could go to historical downtown Vero, which actually um, right off of 14th Street, you pass American Icon Brewery, which is another great location. Um, I would definitely check that out, put that on the list of places to visit. The Kilted Mermaid is very is a very good local place. Taco Dive is good. So that's another uh, great local spot, kind of small, but a great place to uh, kind of take note of. You go around here, you could pick up some good houses right here that are actually zoned for both commercial and residential use. So if you're looking for maybe something like you see on Rainy Street in Austin, Texas, where they have some local houses, but they're converted into either a shop or office and one of those things you could definitely do that here um, just double check on the zoning and if again feel free to reach out if you need help with that but you go around here and you can see they have the jackie robinson training complex which it's funny my family is actually big dodgers fans and this was where they used to have the spring training so i would go to the library read some books and they would give you spring tickets to go and see the dodgers uh, spring games and practice and all that stuff so that's just a cool place, cool memory. Now they hold like youth training, softball, high school, that kind of environment. Now they have the Devil Rays there for a little bit. And then I believe it was um, the Stone Crabs, a minor league team. Anyways, you go down, you take Dodger Road. You can see that you have the Vero Beach Regional Airport, which another thing about that is that it's actually 
getting commercial flights now. So from Vero Beach, you could go to uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, all of those places. And they're actually relatively affordable tickets as well as they have private flights. Another great little brewery is the Walking Tree Brewery. So they have different um, live musics, food vendors, and they have cornhole tournaments. They have something going on relatively often. So you go back and let's go over the Merrill P. Bridge. And you have the Riverside Cafe as well as Riverside Theater and the Vero Beach Dog Park on there at least three, four times a week just getting the dogs out. It's very well kept, very clean, and it's nice to go over the bridge. You have the sail part or the you have the sailboats and you just get that nice uh, well-kept feeling as well as there's a uh, a baseball field out there so let's move on to number four number four on our list is florida ridge and this is going to be a more affordable place to check out it's in between vero beach and fort pierce where the median home price is around 167. that's something you want to take note of there are homes getting renovated there are homes getting fixed but definitely tour the area before you come and uh, pick some places out in southwest vero uh, florida ridge area so as you can see overall grade is an a population of 22,000. the median home price like i said is 167. it's going to be the same school system and let's take a look at where it is as far as uh, the Florida Ridge area. So you can see you have Fort Pierce area, and this is where it kind of cuts off. So you have the McKee Botanical Gardens, which is a, they hold other festivities and they'll have light shows, Christmas shows, Halloween shows. Good place to go and take the kids, especially if you want to tour the Botanical Gardens. So Vero Beach South and um, Southwest Vero, as well as the McKee Botanical Gardens, it kind of makes this this loop around here so this is going to be the florida ridge area as you can see right here it says florida ridge some areas i would definitely take note of is there's new communities being built and structured out here as you can see falcon trace where you could get a home around five hundred thousand, and it's in a gated community it's really nice i would definitely add the falcon trace area and the millstones landing but if you still want that access to the intercoastal i would check out vero shores over here it has as you can see these houses that are directly on the intercoastal again so you come out you can get straight into the indian river lagoon so that's something to note if you want to have water in your backyard i would definitely check out vero shores again i would tour the area if you're looking to get into Florida Ridge, Southwest Vero area, just uh, take a drive around. Homes are getting updated and renovated, but some of them you may not like. Just keep that in mind, but let's move on to the next one. So moving on to number three on our list is the Wabasso Beach area, population around 2100 and the median home price is around 486. So you're going to see it's going to be the same school system. Let's go to Wabasso Beach area. So as you can see, you're leaving Vero Beach. You're going past Gifford. You're taking US-1, which is a relatively nice drive. You have the water all along the coast, which uh, locals take that for granted. But if you're moving here from another location, especially if you're landlocked, this is it's a beautiful drive, especially the further north you get. So you go past Winter Beach and Wabasso, and this is the Wabasso Beach area that they're talking about. It's all located along here. But fun fact, I actually sold a home and did a little bit of research. They're making this land, I should say, is going to be a community. And I sold a home right across here now. Some things to take note of is that there is a trailer park in this vicinity, which again, Florida is known for having modular homes and trailers. It's very retirement oriented. And if you're coming here to open a storage business, that's something I would definitely do, take into consideration because storage fills up quick, especially when the snowbirds leave. So you have the Red Sticks Golf Club right along here, but we're checking out Wabasso Beach. So I would definitely look in this vicinity if you want some newer developments, check that out. If you want uh, maybe some fix me uppers, go up, go a little bit back and check out these areas right around here. But you take the Wabasso Bridge and you'll see the Wabasso Causeway Park. You'll see people parked out there just swimming in the lagoon, maybe fishing along this bridge. So going back, you pass the Environmental Learning Center. You'll see on the other side, you have the Marsh Island Club. So these are um, definitely higher price point homes. If you like new construction, the GHO homes, I think I actually have a couple videos on them as well wonderfully constructed homes i definitely take a look but if you're trying to get into uh, into the beach side for a more affordable price and you don't mind putting a little bit of money into your home i would definitely check out around the barefoot place pebble path 
go up until around Magnolia Spring, and you could maybe pick up a home. Again, it's kind of tough um, to get people to sell right now. They know how close they are to the water, and it's just in a great location. But you have the Disney Vero Beach Resort, which, again, a lot of people come here, and they'll actually stay at this resort, which is a nice thing that some of the locals take for granted, that people come down, they travel, and they want to stay away from Orlando and still get that Vero Beach Disney feel. That's a place that um, I would definitely check out if you're here just visiting. Then you have the Orchid Island Beach Club and HOA. So on both sides, you'll either have access to the water or you'll have all this access to the lagoon, which is a nice area as well. You go up and you'll see Golden Sands, which is another beautiful park and beach that I would definitely check out. And again, the further up you go, there's actually more GHO um, home communities that are being developed. So you might want to take note of and just put on your list if, you, uh, if you're looking for that higher price point home. All right, moving on to number two on our list is South Beach. And it is not the South Beach you're thinking of. If it is the South Beach you're thinking of, you're definitely in the, on the wrong video. And I would go down to Miami because this South Beach is completely different from what you're going to see down there. It's around 3,200 in population and you could get a home for around 600,000 to 700,000. So I would definitely put this on your list and take note of what's to come in Vero Beach because I'm gonna give you some facts about South Beach, but first let's get into the map and then I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. So in order to get to this South Beach area, you can see right here, this is South Beach. So it's in between the Fort Pierce and Vero Beach uh, bridge. So there's no other bridge and that is done on purpose. You know, in order to get to the beaches, you have to go through Vero Beach or through Fort Pierce. So it's kind of a drive, maybe maybe 25, 30 minutes, depending on how fast you drive in US-1, just be careful. But so again, you cross the 17th Street Bridge, you see South Beach Park, which that's a great area, uh, very relaxed and just a nice environment. You'll have some pretty good places to eat along this area too, um, as well as places to live. But if you're looking for an investment or something that will hold its value, I would definitely check out South Beach. It is on the higher end, but there is works of a $60 million mansion. So if you look around that area, um, you'll notice that a lot of lots are being purchased. So when I first moved back into Vero, I was looking at lots and you could purchase one for around 80 to 100,000. That is no longer the case. All these communities and builders are purchasing up homes because they know what it is. They know what this area is going to be. It's actually been referred to as the Hamptons of Florida. So you can see there's a $60 million mansion in the works and I actually pulled it up because I was going to make a separate video for that, just kind of showcasing what it has to offer. So it is a nine bedroom, 18 bath located directly on the South Beach side right here. So you can see it's going to be this property right here and it's already up and listed. Um, these are just some of the specs. It's in, obviously in construction still, but it's going to have great architecture as well as you get this, uh, this piece of property over here. So that's just something to take into consideration. If you have a little bit more money to spend um, and you want to just pick up a lot and then contract some builders, that's something I would, uh, that's something I would do if you want an area to vacation in the future where it's going to hold its value. Moving on to number one on the list is Indian River Shores with a population of around 42,000 people. And this price point is around 700,000, but goes all the way up into the millions. This is the number three best place to retire. And this was definitely on number one for a reason, but let's take a look at Google Maps and see where it's at. So again, you cross the 510 bridge, you go over, you have um, the Wabasso Beach, you head south like you're going to Vero on A1A Beachfront Avenue. A1A Beachfront Avenue. And you see that you have the Indian River Shores, Johns Island, and like I said, 700 to a million plus. You have beautiful homes, oceanfront property. You really can't get beat it for that price point. I mean, honestly, if you look at some of the places in California, what you're getting 4 million plus and how close you are to the water, um, this is obviously a better deal and um, leaving all politics aside. So if you head down, you have beautiful communities and you have JC Park, which is another park I would definitely recommend. Now this has volleyball, pavilions, beach access, 
it has it all. You could even rent it out, have parties. And they're developing more stuff along the the west side, I should say, of A1A. When I was growing up, they didn't have too many places to shop and grab stuff to eat. So that's that's definitely up and coming, hence why it's number one on the list. So if you are a remote worker or you're retired, I definitely check out Indian River Shores. Like I said, number three on Nisha's best places to retire in Florida. So I would check that out. It's a, it's a great place to live. If you want to raise a family, it's definitely more um, slow pace and family oriented just because it is a retired community, this area of Vero. I could dive a little bit deeper into it, but just in case you guys want another video, leave a comment. So that's it for the top five places to live in Indian River County slash Vero Beach. As you could tell, it kind of started going more north and a little bit more south, so it touched on a little bit of all places. But if you want the full list or you want me to touch on Nico, Roseland, Sebastian, Felsmere, Vero Lake Estates, all those areas, I definitely could do another list as well because that's a little bit more of that suburbs feel as far as Sebastian goes. Vero Lake Estates has more of that um, country feel. There's still well water and um, dirt roads on some of them, which if you're purchasing out there, I would just expect your road to be the last one paved. And then um, Felsmere, that's a little bit more agricultural, a little bit more equestrian, a little bit more acreage out there. But again, you still have uh, from there maybe like a 20 minute, uh, 20 minute drive to the beach. So it has something for everyone. And again, if you need help relocating or purchasing or selling your home, please feel free to reach out. We have a whole team dedicated to just getting you in the right area. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'll leave my email and information as well as my phone number on the screen, but I will see you guys in the next video.